Hi, uh, you will see that he, Pau is an apps developer and I, a Moodle developer, and that's important because you will see that we will talking about both during the session, so it's important, apps, Moodle, okay? Let's start. Uh, I want to, yeah, it's like, get people involved here. Uh, what do you think about manual te testing? Who loved it? Manual, manual testing? Okay, only a couple, yeah, thanks, Isa. I was waiting just for you. Who, who hates it? Okay, a lot of people hate manual, uh, manual tests. And what about people that don't care uh, test? Okay, uh -huh. what, why it's like, okay, okay. Uh, and same question, but with automated testing. How many people love automated testing? Okay, now I'm happy, yeah, okay. How people hate automatic testing? Nobody? That's amazing. No, it's like we, we need to do the tell because yeah, we were expecting. And what about people that don't care automatic testing? What are you doing here? <laughs> it's like yeah, we're not. It's like coffee is outside, so yeah. Okay, let's let's start with the talk. So that's it. Why you need test if user reports back? You need it, right? So let's go. Bye. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, Automatic testing are all the scripts and processes that uh, validate and review your code, and they, we have a problem here. <laughs> uh, yeah, uh, and they prove that your code uh, passes like your defined uh, quality threshold, so the better are your tests, the higher will be this threshold. And we are now going to present the benefits and the drawbacks of automatic testing. Uh, manual testing is very tedious, very hard, and it consumes a lot of time. But also, uh, writing automatic tests are uh, consumes time. But the benefit of this is that uh, when you write a test, uh, it can be run forever. Also, it's used uh, to, to detect bugs earlier and mostly regressions. Um, and they are re reliable if your tests are reliable. If not, you have a problem here. And they are 24-7, 20, uh, uh, can be run in any time. And what, uh, this is a phrase that we love, is that fix a bug with a test and it's fixed forever because if a regression happens and you broke it, the test will tell you. On the other part, there, there are also drawbacks. Uh, for example, uh, manual testing uh, introduces randomness because humans are not perfect. I mean, sorry, is perfect, but humans usually not. Uh, so so when, when they run a test, uh, they introduce randomness because they make things different every time, so you, it can help finding bugs if, if testers are not thinking about uh, finding edge cases, for example. There are a few misconceptions about automated testing. Uh, first of that, it's like it's going to replace automated testing to manual tests. Uh, the answer is no, so no worries about people that work uh, testing because no, it's not, it's, it's not going, to ha going to happen. The idea of the automated testing is to reduce the number of tests to run manually, but not to remove completely. Uh, another thing is like, uh, not, and it's impossible to test uh, a, an application all the future, so it's impossible. Uh, it's like, as a, an application, it's not manual, not automatic, it's impossible because there are a lot of features, it's like, even I'm still discovering uh, features in Moodle, and I've been working like 15 years with Moodle, so yeah, it happens the same, I guess, with any uh, all uh, any uh, project. And it's like uh, it's important that we take into account that there are a few things to automate, like for instance, the business critical. It's important to create some tests for them because they are important, and if we automate them. Uh, it, they will help us to identify some regressions. Uh, things that are repeatedly, as Pau mentioned before, is like manual tests are tedious, so yeah, why not to try to automate things that are not as easy or funny to test. Uh, there are a few tests that are 
uh, difficult to, to perform manually. So that's also a good candidate for, for automate. And the ones that are time consuming. So yeah, I think a few ideas. And nowadays there are a few tools that it's like you can record the, the, uh, the, the uh, uh, record some future, how it's working, and they create magically uh, this test. That's okay in some cases, but that's not recommended. It's, not, it's like creating tests is not as easy as just recording some uh, features. Uh, apart from the miscontentions, mis there are a few testing challenges. For instance, as I said before, it's impossible to test a completely uh, com a, a application completely. Uh, relationship between the testers and developers are no, as not as uh, easy, let's say, because you know developers are great people, okay. and it's not easy to talk with uh, them us uh, because uh, they, we need to make sure that testers and developers talk the same language. Uh, it's very important uh, to have uh, these regression testings uh, because it's like, especially when an application is growing and growing, uh, it's very important to identify them these uh, regressions uh, earlier. Uh, it's not easy to find a skilled tester, so that's also an important challenge when we try to find some people who to run all these uh, manual tests or to create the automated tests, it's not always easy to find them. Uh, testing applications and the time constraints are, is not good. In, in fact, doing anything under time constraints is not good, so, but it's like testing is especially bad because yes, you, win, you won't be focused on what you are really testing, you just want to finish tests and done. Uh, it's also important, it's critical to define which tests to, be, to run first, uh, so to, it's, we need to know which, which criteria we need to use to prioritize these tests. Uh, we need to make sure that uh, testers uh, and understand the requirements. Uh, this is not always easy because you know if, if it's depending on the person giving them the, the, the these requirements and as you say, the, the scale the testers are, is, are not easy to find, and communication with developers is not easy. So it's all these points are kind of related. And the last one is like, uh, it's like we are not running just one project. I'm sure that every, most of the people here is like we are not just we are not have just one model. We have also other projects in our team, and testing all these different projects is sometimes challenging because you you need to have uh, skilled testers knowing more than one application. So it's like a, another. Uh, challenge. Okay, so this is our division on types of automated testing. The first one is not uh, really a test, but is uh, checking for standardization uh, because uh, it says that your code is passing your style uh, style definitions, uh, but it is important to have a good quality code. Also, there's the unit testing or the integration testing the, um, that is saying that your methods are doing what you say they are doing. Uh, in our projects, we use PHP unit on the Moodle side and Jest on the apps side. And then we have this acceptance and behavior testing that uh, checks that your features behave as they say. We are using Cucumber. We will explain later uh, what is this about, but there are also another, other frameworks like Fitness. And also we find important uh, the user experience testing because it's a kind of test that will involve quality code. It's not uh, objective, so um, always need uh, somebody behind to check, uh, to check uh, the tests. And uh, this test uh, is meant to, for, to, to know if the users um, can do what you want them to do or what they want to do, okay? On the part of the standardization checks, uh, the LMS part has uh, we have the... Yeah. yeah, we have, uh, as you probably know, uh, at least the developers, we have the coding style, which defines kind of serious rules. And we have two different ways to check that the code is uh, it's okay with these rules. Uh, we have the SIMI level. I don't know if you know this. You, you know this level, but it's like if you add this to the any tracker issue, this the cybot will be run, and you will see uh, 
some of the rules defined in the coding style, like if the commit message is okay, or the some mis there are some missing PHP doc uh, blocks or things like that. And apart from that, we have also a linter, the PHP code sniffer, so it's like something that you can install locally in your local environment and put, uh, and it will help you to identify or to follow the rules defined in the coding style. What about the pub? Yeah, on the part of the app, uh, on every commit, on every uh, code uh, you send to us, uh, there's a, a check that uh, tests that language strings are currently introduced in the code. Also, we have a linter that is called slint and is checking the coding styles. Uh, and we have this code compatibility because JavaScript is evolving very quick and we have to be backwards compatible. compatible. Uh, so we check that all the functions we are using uh, can be run on an Android 5, iOS 11, or, or the Chrome 61 version. And for a final check, we build the app to find if there are compilation errors. Okay, so we will start uh, on the unit testing. Ta-da! Okay, on the unit testing, uh, we run unit and integration test. On the LMS part, we run uh, PHP unit. And on the app uh, JavaScript part, we run, we run Jest. But you have to be aware that uh, all the JavaScript code that is in the LMS part, it's not tested. So we are not perfect. <laughs> uh, those tests are run without any browser, so they are very fast, and they are good for this uh, TDD, that is test-driven development, that is uh, encourage developers to write the test before start uh, development of the functions. Okay, uh, about PHP unit, I'm going to give you a few best practices, but before that, how many people has written some uh, PHP unit test? Okay, not too bad, okay. So yeah, I, I guess, I, I hope that you are familiarized with them. Otherwise, it's just time for taking a picture of this or to annotate them. Uh, it's like, uh, we recommend the use of covers and, and covers the for class uh, for yes, that just to check and to see how covered is your application. So go for it and add this label to the, the PHP doc blocks. Uh, I learned this one while preparing this presentation. So the, the group annotation is also recommended because you can run tests uh, for your plugin. So if you, you have more than one PHP unit file, you can add, add this group label and then, then run more than one PHP unit files easily. Uh, remember that it's important uh, to keep the use of the reset after test uh, to the minimum. So it's right. Just uh, use it when you need to remove, to, to, to reset the data. And it's important not to use it in the uh, setup and in the teardown method, so please remember this. And uh, data providers are our friends. How many people has used data providers uh, when creating PHP unit? Okay, so yeah, people that has written some PHP unit and hasn't used uh, data providers, just your homework for tomorrow. Uh, so uh, it's like they will help you to Yes, when you need to run the same test with several scenarios with different da data, that's the, the, the best way to do it. We will see an example in the next slide. Uh, another good thing about PHP unit is that it's integrated with uh, GitHub Actions. So it's like once you push your branch to GitHub, uh, several uh, jobs are run and a couple of PHP unit jobs are executed using different model co uh, configuration ones uh, based on PHP and, model and, and databases. So that's okay because it's also, you, you will see if the tests are pricing, passing or your mm, code has broke some of the existing tests or the new ones that you have created. Uh, about the, uh, there is an, an example. Uh, yeah, maybe the letter is not the best, so probably at the end of the, yeah, it's quite, quite hard to see, but we will share the presentation, so. Uh, here there are two methods. The first one, the one in the left, is the, the test. Uh, this is using a provider, so as you can see, here we have the data provider, which is the, the name of the method, which is the other one, when, when we have an array with all the scenarios that we will execute in. So in the, uh, left one, we have the, the, the test to be executed with the parameters and the, the things to test. 
And on the, the other, the data, the data provider is just an array with all the data that we want to test. It's that easy, so it's not super hard. That's something that you need to try and yeah, came to us. Okay, and on the other part, in the part of the, of the Moodle app, uh, we are now introducing Jest into the app, so we have uh, a lower coverage for the app. Um, Jest is installed using Node Package Manager, and if you uh, type NP, npm install, it will be installed. Uh, we have this issue that uh, we are using the, the app team to, uh, we are using two hours a week to add more tests uh, to the old code base. And is also integrated in the GitHub actions. The difference with the Moodle LMS is that if the test do, uh, don't pass, uh, the code is not integrated because it's blocked by GitHub. Okay, and the next type of, of tests is the behavior testing. Uh, we have uh, we have this behavior driven development that is like the test driven development, but using behavioral testing. Um, test using this uh, this test are written in a customer or user friendly language, so every user should uh, be able to read those uh, those tests. And those are the main uh, the main concepts of 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 the behavior uh, testing. Cucumber is the software tool that we are using to automate this test. Uh, but the, um, the current framework uh, of Cucumber for PHP is called BHAT. Uh, and uh, it's using Gherkin language. Is, we will see later um, how, how this uh, language is. And uh, if, you, if you are using uh, this test, uh, you usually see this word mink in, in, the, in the failures and it's the library that is used to control the simulated browser. So, so if you find this word, uh, you know what it is. Uh, the Gherkin syntax, it's like, uh, let's see some examples. Gherkin, it's based on a feature, so it's like uh, in Moodle, probably uh, people familiarized with Behat, knows that uh, we have a feature file but for every function that we want to cover. Uh, in every feature file, we have one or more scenarios, and then uh, every single scenario has a list of steps. Uh, these steps is like we have several types of, of steps. They, we have the given, the when, and the then. It's recommended to have only one occurrence of these steps and then add a lot of ands. If you have to, lead to add an, a, a lot of ands, or do you need more given, when, or then, maybe that may need that you need to split this scenario in more than one. Uh, the given is just kind of the preconditions that need to happen to run a test. The when is like what the user has to do to at the then, which is the result. Okay, so let's see an example. I think it will be make things easier. Uh, yeah, again. Again, uh, probably the, the letter is not the best for you, but it's like, sorry. Uh, we are trying, we have an example here where to try to see uh, the functionality of the login block. We have in Moodle a, a login block. And on the right, on the left side, we have the lateral language, the way to define what we want to test. So it's like this feature, which is logging from the login block uh, that we have in Moodle. Uh, this a few description. This is not it's not uh, mandatory. It's not uh, running anything, but it's like just just to see that you need a user with an account just to make sure that he can he or she can log in. We have an scenario. In that case, we are trying to say to to test that Julia wants to log in as a student using the block. Uh, this is this to be the, the successful scenario, but we could ha have any more scenarios, like for instance, uh, what happens with the user and the password are not okay, or we could also have some edge scenarios. It's like this is just one example. And then we have this different steps. In the natural language, we, we will say that given that Julia has a valid user account and that we have the block, the login block in the home page, when Julia inserts his, uh, her name and password in the uh, block, in the login block, then she should log in. That's the natural language, what it says. Uh, if we check, uh, if we make to translate 
this natural language to Gherkin, to it, like the, one, the thing that we have in Bihat, that's what we will get, uh, get. It's quite similar. In fact, we were testing this with Julia, and well, she was able to understand the code, so it's like, and she is not the developer, so yeah. Uh, so yeah, it's like uh, the feature, as you can see, is exactly the same test. The scenario is like logging as a student through the login block, so that's okay. If you, uh, and then we uh, we have the steps. In that case, they are slightly different. We have the given the following users exist. In that case, we want to have the uh, the users Julia. We are using a Behat generator. They are uh, super important because and uh, they make. Uh, uh, test faster, so it's like something that we recommend, especially because in that case we are not testing that uh, the the user's creation. So it's like instead of saying uh, you log in as an admin, go to the site administration, go to users, create a user. That's long and <laughs> you need a lot of time. For this, we have only this step with the create these users done. Uh, and then it's like for the login block, for running the login block to the main page. It's not that easy because we don't have a generator, so it's like instead of having one single step, we need like five steps, which will take longer than uh, the other, the previous one. So it's like, that's why it's also important for you. It's like if you are uh, creating your BHAP uh, test, it's important to use uh, BHAP generators. That's also something that we would like you to give from this presentation. So it's like these uh, five steps are creating uh, the the, adding the block, the login block to the home page. Uh, and then it's like, once we have the user and the block, we need we have this, the when, when I set the field username to Julia and I set the field password to that password, and I click to the login button, so it's like you can see there, the username, password, and the login button, then I should see that you are logging it and the login block should not appear anymore. So it's like, this is kind of the translation. It's not, it's not that hard, and as you can see, uh, almost yeah, it's like a regular tester should be able to kind of prepare, create them. It's, uh, yeah, that's all. Okay, so who currently should write those tests? Uh, we have here the three amigos. Uh, the first one is the one that loves meetings. Uh, the product owner and the business analyst, and they define the scope and yeah, translate the user stories into current features, so they know how this feature should go, should work. Also, there's the developer. Ta-da! Okay. The developer that uh, adds the steps and works uh, behind the scenes, like, like how every step will be implemented in, in the code, and think about how everything works. And the last one is the tester that uh, will generate the scenarios, think about edge cases, add all the edge cases into the every feature, and it, it, it wants to, uh, they want to break the application. So if they cannot break it, you win. Okay, we've seen uh, like the checks thing, the, the unit test, the behavioral test, and now the last one, which is like the, the usability testing. Testing. This can be automated, but uh, it's something that we think that is really important. Uh, usability testings are not for finding bugs, are for uh, trying to find improvements. Uh, we have recently, uh, we, we have one person in Moodle, uh, our UX researcher in product experience team. Uh, she, she's name, her name is Cetara, so you will probably start seeing her, her name in the forums and things like that. If you want to participate, if you want to help us uh, to yeah, do this, researchers or participating in the service that we are doing, uh, we uh, recommend you to subscribe to this forum. Uh, or you can also visit our product bar in the ground floor and contact to uh, Sabina. She is running some uh, tests related to the database activity project that we are trying to improve for 4.1. And you can also contact to Edu from the Moodle app. I think Edu is giving a presentation. Edu has a presentation this Thursday at 12.30, I think. So it's, is there? Okay. <laughs> Here. <laughs> so uh, he's talking about how, how the Moodle app has evolved to 4.0 and yeah, 4.1 ah, at 1 p.m., okay. <laughs> uh, 
uh, a part of all these types, it's also important to talk about the quality assurance, the QA testing. We have two different type, types of QA in Moodle. Uh, every week we release a version. Um, before releasing this version, we are uh, testing manually all the issues, well, manually or not, depending on if the issue has some automated testings or not, but the ones that are, don't have uh, any test, they need, to be, they, they need to be executed manually, and we have a dedicated team for that. And apart from that, uh, we, have, we have also the QI cycle, cycle that runs every, uh, it's like before every release, every major release, uh, about one month or one, one month and a half before the, the version is released. And that's really nice because the, the QA cycle is also run not just because uh, for this uh, de the dedicated team is also run by the community. So that's something that's like if you want to help Moodle to get better and things like that, that's something that anybody can do. So just yeah, keep touch and it's like if you want to help us, you will see that there are a lot of issues to be tested manually. Uh, and it's important that it's like we're trying to reduce the number of issues uh, in the QA and we are m moving from, from manual test to automated test. Uh, we are adding some hats there, so that's also kind of related with what we have been talking before. Okay, so one of the objectives of this of this talk is to make you think about to have a QA team in your in your projects or, or even in your life. Uh, there are lots of roles on the QA part, but we separated into two main ones. The manual QA that will analyze and make all the manual tests, execute them, and make also exploratory tests so they want to break the app, you know. Uh, and creates a report and, uh, for example, on the apps part, they, they uh, find the coherence on, on the iOS and Android versions and so on. And on the other part, on the automated part, the non-functional QA uh, will write how the test and when and, and what test uh, they are needed and write a test plan. Uh, also, also they, they, make, they run the test, of course, and regressions and for um, checking for performance and, and write the documentations of that. So, yeah. And the other uh, like objective of this, of this talk is to make you think that you have to invert the pyramid. So, uh, currently in the Moodle app, we are in the left part. We are not perfect. Uh, we have a few uh, unit tests, even less integration tests. Then we have quite a few we had tests and a lot of manual testing before any release. And the objective is to move to the other part uh, to have the mm, to have less less work to do and more automated. Uh, the LMS part do, uh, did a great job on that, and and less uh, JavaScript not, not is not there. <laughs> Uh, the other are on the left, on the right part. So it's like uh, once we have all these automated testing layers, it's easy to go for a continuous integration, which is why, what we have in LMS. As I mentioned before, we have a weekly release every week. Uh, and it's we can do this because it's like we have a lot of uh, things automated. We have the GitHub Actions, which they help us to identify uh, PHP unit failures. We have the Cybot for the uh, coding style checks. Uh, we have Jenkins. Uh, we have Jenkins, uh, which is running uh, a lot of uh, PHP unit and BHAT tests. So it's like uh, this is helping us just not to have to run all the manual tests every single week, but, and we can release this mm, weekly uh, every week. Uh, as we are kind of, uh, run of, it's like we have been talking about that, so it's like this is a kind of summary, we will, I can just this one. Uh, you, you will find this summary uh, in the presentation, this is uh, just to, yeah, and we can go for the next one. Yeah, tomorrow you will find another uh, BHAT and testing uh, talk uh, with Davo Smith. I don't know if he's here, but yeah, interesting one. Yeah, he's there. Uh, so check the schedule. And this is one of our uh, Pimpinella talks. And uh, let's see what's next. Hope we can repeat again. <laughs>